This is your host, Tapin Bharatiya, and welcome to another episode of TFR Let's Talk. And today we have with us Josh Williams, Head of Engineering at Observe IQ. Josh, it's good to have you on the show. Uh, thank you for having me. Today we're going to talk a bit about, you know, the whole evolution of observability space. But before we go there, just could you remind our viewers, what is Observe IQ all about? Observe IQ is a company completely centered around open telemetry and collecting uh, just in general, uh, I would say facilitating collection for customers in regards to telemetry, both logs, traces, and metrics, and really enabling customers to send those that telemetry to any platform or destination of their choice. And can you also talk a bit about how have you seen the evolution of observability itself in the cloud-centric world ever since the not only uh, foundation of the company, but if you look at open telemetry also, it was the merger of two projects, you know, uh, open sensors were there, you know, so, so talk a bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I have been uh, working in this space for probably, I would say, seven or eight years now. And it's been a very interesting journey for me to watch how uh, telemetry, the telemetry industry has evolved over time. So obviously, uh, very early on, uh, all of these different platforms and vendors had very specific APIs, very specific requirements for collecting data. Uh, we've seen that transform over the last year or two with the advent of open telemetry. Uh, where there is a now consistent model uh, that is being used. Uh, the one place that I, I have probably seen the most evolution, in my opinion, is uh, not just the, the standardization of how that data is collected, but also in terms of how that data is ingested. You, you see quite a few uh, vendors recently are starting to switch over to uh, ingesting what's known as OTLP format, which is the standard format in open telemetry. And, and that seems to be the big trend right now that I'm observing. What is driving this trend? What I would say that is uh, driving it would be, uh, so the first thing that was standardized with open telemetry was the actual collection of the telemetry. And uh, what ends up happening is every single one of these vendors or platforms has to support their own model within say the open telemetry collector to send this telemetry to their platform. Uh, so, one thing that you would see change over time is that then requires support for what are known as exporters in the collector. So they, uh, their API as it changes or requirements change, uh, the way they ingest that data is going to have to be uh, maintained over a long period of time. Whereas in contrast, if you were to accept the data in say OTLP format, this is now a standardized ingestion point and you no longer have to support all of these different disparate APIs that accept the data encoded say in a certain format, expected to be sent up, uh, in a certain uh, particular manner. One of the ways I see this is, uh, you know, some, some telemetry platforms will ingest labels uh, for their metrics in a certain format compared to other telemetry platforms. Uh, it's actually been a little bit of a, a, a learning curve for us at Observe IQ when it comes to the open telemetry collector. Uh, so for instance, when collecting data and sending to a platform like GCP, uh, that data might have to be massaged or altered slightly differently than the data that is being sent to say another platform like New Relic. Uh, and, that, and that is because uh, there are different expectations between the two. There are different expectations for their API. There are different expectations in regards to how the open telemetry uh, formatted data is actually transferred exposed and uh, mapped over to the data format that the platforms are expecting. So when that changes to instead natively ingesting, say, OTLP, the, the user or the customer no longer has to reason through that in regards to how they send their data. Whereas right now, what we're encountering with several customers is they may have uh, an open telemetry uh, pipeline that they have configured uh, that would work generically, but they still have to maybe alter or move fields around in order to facilitate the data to be used, uh, say, to its fullest in those platforms. What kind of adoption you have seen of Observe IQ blind plane? You can, it would be great to see you know, some of the either big use cases or some of the exciting, unique use cases. They're like, hey, we were not even expecting that use case there. Yeah, absolutely. So um, as I mentioned before, it's been a really interesting journey for us. I would say early on in our company's history, we were very much focused on collecting the data. And so a lot of our efforts were, were centered around, say, integrations. So for instance, how do we collect metrics or logs from Postgres? How do we collect metrics or logs from Nginx? 
And that has transformed over time because that is a uh, more or less solved problem when it comes to the open telemetry community. Once that integration is built, once that receiver is built, that's a solved problem. Uh, what we're now experiencing is instead uh, focusing on cost reduction for our customers. So whereas we facilitated the collection of the data, it's now then taking that data for our customers and helping them reduce the cost to the platforms that they're sending to. And this could be done in any myriad of ways. Uh, for instance, we could uh, reduce the number of logs that are being sent by uh, deduplicating uh, you know, common logs that maybe don't have to be sent as often as they're being sent. Or for instance, uh, one of the big efforts that we did recently with Bindplane is we actually created a processor in OpenSlometry that allows you to take uh, logs and convert them into metrics because different platforms may have a very costly log model where it costs quite a bit of money to uh, ingest, uh, say, large amounts of logs. And so what we can do instead for the customers is we can take those logs, we can extract data from it, and then turn those into metrics. A, a great example would be, say, Apache, HTTP request logs, uh, you could turn those into metrics that could be, say, a metric that is a number of bad requests. So rather than having every single log for every single bad request that you've observed and paying for the storage of those logs, you can then turn that into a data point that drastically reduces the amount of data that you're sending. As you said, you know, the, the adoption is growing, but uh, as the adoption is growing, we are also seeing, you know, of course, uh, the use cases of Kubernetes is also growing beyond what was you know, expected, which also means that uh, the customers are running into problems, challenges that we did not see before, or you're like, hey, yeah, this is what we learned to. So what are the challenges that you see the, the customers are facing today, which you, it's not that, hey, you know, we have solved it, but you're like, this is still a problem we have to solve. One of the problems we're facing uh, that Kubernetes definitely brings to mind uh, is in regards to our collector deployments that we do for customers. So for instance, when they're monitoring an application within Kubernetes uh, that requires to deploy the collectors in a somewhat ephemeral state, and so with our Bindplane platform that allows us to manage these deployments, we have an issue where, say, collectors are coming online or going offline as the Kubernetes environment is scaling. And because of that, uh, we have to somewhat help our customers reason through, say, uh, one of our main value props is uh, showing the amount of data that's flowing through their system. But if those agents are disappearing over time, we don't want to just throw those measurements away. Uh, and who knows how quickly or uh, that, that system is scaling or scaling down. And so uh, that, that's been a challenge that we, we've encountered recently is we have to look at uh, our deployment model slightly differently when it uh, comes to Kubernetes and somewhat reconcile that with, uh, say, our non-Kubernetes deployments. It's mostly the ephemeral state is the way I would summarize it. And how well prepared is Observe IQ or the community to address some of these challenges? Because one, one more thing that we see in the cloud native world is uh, things get complicated very quickly. There are so many projects, there are so much overlap. Even if you look at their fully dedicated you know, project and then there are other projects which are expanding their scope. So how do you look at that? Yes, uh, so that's very interesting uh, for us because open telemetry, uh, I would say, because it is a large community open source project, uh, one of the, the complications that you'll see is um, there are several different voices in the community that are pushing for, uh, say, different things that they would like to prioritize. And one of the things I have noticed in regards to open telemetry is uh, the complexity of the configurations for customers. Um, they're very complex. Um, there are several smart individuals working on this project. And because of that, there are just so many levers, so many things that you can slightly tweak in regards to batching, in regards to how you're handling your memory, like limiting that memory. Uh, so that is one of the challenges we face. Uh, However, something that I saw very, and the, the slight aside, but something that I see that is very interesting around this is uh, with the recent advent of, uh, say, AI or things like ChatGPT, one of the cool things we've seen customers do uh, is uh, feed into ChatGPT uh, the requirements they have for their config that they would like to put together because uh, it can be somewhat intimidating to build one from scratch if you've never worked with open telemetry before and we have seen customers uh, be successful in doing that uh, creating quite complex configs that solve their use case by feeding it in so uh, it necessarily isn't a solution to the issue that i see but it is a, an interesting use of technology to use another technology Josh, thank you so much for taking time out today and, of course, talk about not only the company uh, the ecosystem and, of course, how you folks are solving this problem for the larger ecosystem there. Uh, thanks for your insights. And as usual, I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time today, too.